All right, we are recording. This is New Humanity Now on July 30th, 2020. Right now we've got Glory and Lee Isla and Doriana. Doriana's kind of half with us. She's double listening. I don't know how she does that anymore. <laughs> and uh, Glory may or may not have to pop in and out. So, and we may have more people popping in because um, I thought we did. I just had a, a really funny thing. I was teaching a class yesterday to the... Um, to the ministers and I heard from one gal who said, well, she texted me, she Facebook messaged me yesterday morning with just a simple, is today the first class? I'm like, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're talking about. Like I have no clue right now. I went back and I opened up the Facebook chat and then I figured out, oh yeah, she'd been talking to me about this class we're gonna teach. And I said, yeah, it's in 30 minutes. I'll send you the link in just a few minutes once we're open. And then she never came. I never saw her. I thought, well, that was weird. I, I worry about it. It was a pretty big class, so, but I just thought, well, that was weird. And then this morning I was getting ready to just send her, shoot her an email and go, hey, what happened? We missed you. And she, <laughs> and she sent me another Facebook message and said, thanks for such a great class. I'm like, wait, you were there? <laughs> she must have been there. I don't know. <laughs> it was very funny. But there was somebody who was on an iPhone with no name, so that probably was her. But I just never even put it together. <laughs> very funny. Uh, very funny. Oh, I just got a text from Leila. Good. <laughs> Glad you're here. Kate's coming in. So um, these new Humanity Now um, calls. Hey, Kate. Welcome. Hi. Our um, we're, we're, we're doing these twice a month inside the new humanity now, um, platform and, um, and if they're always, they're sort of always different. It's really interesting. You know, it's, it, the mix of people always sort of moves and change. We've got about 20 people, I think in the platform. And so, um, one of my intentions was really to build community there because that's what I kept hearing from the people I was talking to. I want community. I want to be able to talk. And then, and then it's like, okay, it's wonderful. So one of the things that I thought would be helpful is sort of a weekly theme, even though we only come on the, on the live zoom um, twice a month or maybe, maybe two themes a month. And um, we'll see if that actually works. And I'm open to, if you have ideas or things you really want me to um, bring, uh, happy to do that. And if we wanna just keep it loose and open and we just get on the, on the call and see what happens, that's fine too. But I really want to be in service to um, the people who are here. So having said that, um, the theme, I decided the theme for, for this week is all about that power of choice. So I did the, live on Monday and I did the um, meditation yesterday, both was sort of the theme on choice and how we actually can choose. You know, we can't necessarily choose <clears throat> life situation, life circumstance, right? Because life brings us what it brings us. But in that, we always have the power to choose how we, in, the, in, the, in one of them, I said how we feel but, but then in the other one, I said, we don't even have necessarily the power to choose how we feel, like if we're in despair or depression or grief and we want to change how we feel, it's really hard to change, like go, I feel depressed, I'm going to change how I feel. That's really, really difficult to do. So I reframed it and I said, we have the power to choose our vibrational frequency, which feels very different to me than changing my emotion. It ultimately gives you the same experience, but it's just a little paradigm shift. So let's start. Oh, here it's Gina Diane. <clears throat> I have to pay attention to the waiting room or figure out how to turn it off. <laughs> One or the other. All right. Um, we're going to line up, but we'll wait until Gina Diane's actually in here and present. So um, here she comes. Hello, beautiful. Welcome. Welcome. We're just about to do a lineup, so <clears throat> lining up our energy together and just, <clears throat> excuse me, just bringing our full awareness. Um, I've, I've been picturing it this way, like we're all scattered. Everything's out here. Our thoughts, our feelings, the emotion, the things that are coming at us, our parents, <laughs> our kids, our grandkids, 
And when we line up, we just bring all of our awareness just right here center to our core. So just feel your energy body drawing your awareness in. And when it gets close to lining up, there's a like it locks into place. And when it locks into place, find that place in the core of your being. It is like a core. It is like a pillar. And it is like a still point. So we just land in that still point. And if you can't find it, just allow the rest of us to hold that space for us individually and collectively. And then just keep dropping into it. Just drop in, drop in, just land. I choose to land, I choose to land, I choose to land. Oh, there I am. Oh, there it is. One tool that works very well, if you can't find it, is to just feel your feet. Allow your full awareness to be drawn down to the bottoms of your feet. That helps you get out of your mind and out of, out of the noise. And then we fine tune that dial to that point of stillness. And then we turn it up and we turn it up and we turn it up. And what we turn it up to is our biggest, boldest, most brilliant becoming us. We don't have to know what that is. We just turn it up that the essence of who we are is ever becoming. So just turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Allow your being to expand, allow your awareness to be lifted out of this plane to a new plane, to a new perspective, to a new humanity. And as we are here individually, we line up collectively. Right now we have Gloria and Kate and Lee Island, Doriana and Gina, Diane and Eliza just And we lift it, and we lift it, and we gift it to the universe. And as we give it away freely, it comes back around, encircles the globe, and lands right down on you. An energy of vibration and awareness, a newness. And it lands right down on you. Sometimes it feels like it comes in like sparkles or glitter or colors or crystallines. And just let your being open to receive it. As we open to receive it, it actually permeates and penetrates and fills the inner spaces of our being. Sometimes even electrifying ourselves, energizing ourselves. Take a couple of breaths in, continue to open, expand, allow, receive. <laughs> notice what you notice. Maybe a word, a sensation, an image, a symbol, a thought even, a vision perhaps. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Mm -hmm. So hello and good morning, you beautiful beings of becomingness. So we're going to open and um, and check in. So um, tell us your name and where you're from, because we're continuing to develop relationship and get to know each other. And then share um, anything you'd like to share, either about our experience just then or what's up for you today.
Mayla, you're already unmuted, so why don't you kick us off? Good morning, everyone. I am Leila. I'm from the Denver area, actually closer to the mountains, but it's a good place. And uh, I listened to Eliza's works yesterday for Facebook and her meditation, and then I got up this morning and I did a few more meditations before joining today. And I'm really enjoying the choosing on how you choose to see your day and how you choose to see your world and how you choose to react to whatever may come at you. And uh, today I am going uh, back to work for this lady that we don't always see eye to eye, but I've done a lot of uh, things in the last 24 hours to uh, be good with going in today. And, uh, So things just feel lighter. Beautiful. And um, for you, like, to feel good about going in versus, you know, a couple of weeks ago, it was like, I want to cry when I think about going in. Big difference. Big shift. It's a big difference. I, yeah. I still have a little bit of tightness in my stomach because I don't know what to expect today. But I have in my mind that if she starts to get to me, I'm just going to turn and tell her that I bless her and I forgive her and I ask her forgiveness and that I appreciate who she is. And uh, that's it. I, I choose not to, not to allow the, the petty to get to me today. And as long as I keep my word to myself of actually saying those words to her, not the other, the petty part, <laughs> but the, you know, I appreciate you and I forgive you and I forgive me. And I hope you forgive me. And uh, leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we used to, uh, years ago, and I haven't done it for a long time, although I think I might have mentioned it somewhere in the last few months, is like we used to surround ourselves with Teflon. Remember when Teflon was first out, you know, the Teflon plans? pants now people are like who oh, don't use teflon <laughs> whatever but but that but put surround ourselves with teflon so that anything that you know that that last week would have stung just hits that teflon <laughs> nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul oh, i like that one nothing can disturb And exactly. we almost had to actually say that to her. <laughs> Nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul. Sometimes it works to say it out loud. Often it works better if you don't say it out loud. <laughs> because there's a little antagonizing that can happen when you say it out loud. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you don't have to stay where you're abused, period. No, right? I'm hoping that today is actually my last day of working with her. There you go. So anything you want, need, desire today in this time together? Focus. I must focus today. Okay. I am in playoffs today. In my pool. I play billiards. So I'm in playoffs today and I just need to stay focused and at peace with my game. Brilliant. Great. Who's next? Oh, I'm having a, a UFO cross over my face. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> Corey, are you in a place where you can speak? Yeah, I'll go awesome. ahead and I'll go ahead and talk. Um, I really enjoyed, like I said, before we started the call, I enjoyed the meditation and, you know, as I was thinking about that frequency of gratitude and appreciation, um, in the past I've used a past memory, but for some reason today it was a future memory that came up or an alternate dimension memory. I don't know. 
Um, but I mentioned to you before that I have like this dream of being a space tourist someday. <laughs> so I envision myself on top of a rocket ship and, and like catapulting, launching up, which I love that as a, as a metaphor, you know, of a way to raise my frequency very quickly. <laughs> and just this appreciation of, of, of seeing the stars and looking down on the earth and, you know, just so much beauty and of the feeling of like this joy, of like, oh, wow, I'm really doing this. Um, so that was, that was cool. I don't know that I'd ever done like a future memory before. So I kind of had fun playing with that. One thing that strikes me, you know, you were talking about, you know, how challenging it can be when we're in the density of the emotion. Um, and, and for me, you know, definitely the, the density of, of grief or depression and that that can really, it's like quicksand. It can just really just suck me right in. And how it, it when I'm in that, it's like, yeah, it feels completely impossible to just like get out of it. And experimenting with turning around, facing it, embracing it, and then catapulting, you know, or then lifting the frequency. And I guess something I want to be reminded of today is that pivot, the techniques, the things that I can do to more effectively pivot when I'm, when I'm caught in that density, you know, in my mind, it's telling me, yeah, okay, all I need to do is just choose a different thought. And you now I do that, but I still feel that heaviness, like in, in my body and in my gut, um, that sort of sinking feeling. So bringing the pivot, you know, into all aspects of my being, um, you know, even at the physical level, you know, I know we talk a lot about, you know, shifting out of that reptilian brain or that fight or flight response, um, you know, and just making a, just doing something different with my body. And, and sometimes that can just be some physical exercise. But for me, it would be kind of interesting if we could maybe talk a little bit, or if you could address that a little bit about different ways to pivot. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. Pivot is such a powerful um, pivot. <laughs> pivot. Practice. Practice, I guess. Tool. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Glory. Kate, Gina, Diane, Gina, Diane, with that, with your background and the words, which I can't quite read, I have to lean right into to read them. You, you almost look like a, a, like a cover banner. Oh, <laughs> doesn't she? Like she looks like, like she's a cover banner. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. I can go. I'm Gina, Diane from Vancouver, uh, Canada. And I, um, let's see, I was, um, I've been doing some uh, energy work this morning, some body work with, uh, with a woman who's very powerful. So uh, one of the things that we did was to do something like, what you did, Eliza, where we went down um, into our core and uh, from the still point we're creating. Um, and I'm still in a bit of that uh, fog. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I think that's, that's what I'll say. And what I need today Hmm. is, I suppose, focus as well. Um, as Leila said, um, I'm going to be transferring some uh, files from a website that I'm going to be closing into my new computer, and I need to... Um, not let my mind wander because it's kind of a, a mind numbing in a way thing. Um, but I want to make sure that I capture everything that I should and I don't get distracted and um, lose information that I want to keep. So. Awesome. So focus, focus, pivot, mm -hmm. pivot or focus, pivot, focus. <laughs> 
Great, thanks. Hello, I'm Kate, I'm from Illinois. And I started to listen to um, the thing on choice yesterday and I couldn't focus on it because <laughs> I was trapped in anxiety. We had a mess going on at Seeing Gear. So I listened to it this morning and I, because I felt so much better this morning, I thought, dang, I wish I would have listened to that yesterday because it would have been lovely to pivot in the middle of that. Um, it reminded me though once of a sermon I heard Oh my God, I think it was 40 years ago. And you know, some things just stick with you. And it was a New Year's, it was a New Year's Day uh, service. And the priest said, instead of making resolutions or like lamenting over your past year, I want you to close your eyes for a minute. Now think of one of your favorite little memory that pops in your head. Don't even think, just let it pop. Now begin your year with that. And for me, it was, I was carrying my baby niece who is now uh, in her mid thirties. And we connected for the first time and we're like really connected. She lived out of state. And that was such a gentle and powerful moment. And that was my moment that I carried into the next year. So when you were in the meditate, when you were talking about like grab an appreciative moment, I thought how often I've started my new year with that, even now. I thought, no, go grab that moment. And I thought, wow. You really can uh, pivot the way you're looking at something or experiencing something. And I love the idea of the neural pathways actually changing and having it happen um, more readily. So that's it. I, I really liked that. And it was very helpful to me today. And I laughed because I didn't listen to it yesterday. But yeah, you do what you do. Sometimes you need to dive down into the uh, goop. We were talking about group in a different group earlier this week. We were talking about the goop, right? The, just the goop of life. Sometimes you just have to go, you know, swim in the goop for a minute, which is really about feeling the feelings and, and uh, experiencing what is. So, um, so I was thinking about uh, on on you on the check-ins. I was thinking about how to take this a step further. And because Kate mentioned uh, neuropathways, it, it, I just want to give a little bit, maybe, probably you already know this, but a little bit about how our, our biochemistry in the physical body works. And that is that we are biochemical, hormonal sacks of skin <laughs> with all kinds of things inside of us. I don't think I've ever said it like that before. But when we do this spiritual work, <clears throat> I did all this spiritual work, you know, I've been doing my spiritual work for 35 years or something like that, a long time. But when we do this spiritual work, we don't necessarily know how it impacts our physicality. But when we can bring it into and through our physicality um, and line up with the science behind it, it can like quicken it. It can, it can change things. So basically we live in our subconscious, right? Most of humanity is 99.9% .9 unconscious. So we live in the subconscious. But when we bring our awareness by whatever means we can into this now moment, like fully in this now moment, not just, yeah, 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 yeah. I know to be present. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. Like we do No, but really, and we land in this moment, or we land in our physicality, or we land in our appreciation, or we land our feet to the earth, and we're right here, and there's nothing else going on, we are in a, a portal of sorts, the portal of the spiritual heart, the portal of the quantum field, the portal between um, spiritual and material, but in that eternal now moment, we have deactivated the subconscious mind. When we deactivate, we just put it on pause or turn it off for a moment. But the only way to do that is to get in this now moment. That's the only place that the subconscious is not actively sort of running us behind the scenes. It's like turning off that. Jane and Diane got a new program. It's, it's like turning off the old operating system for a moment, right? In order to choose, in order to align, in order to be our ever becomingness. And when we turn off the subconscious, we also turn off 
where our biochemistry is typically filled and running the stress hormones. There's lots and lots of science. It, it, you can look that up. But, but when we run that stress hormones, we're in the limbic brain, the, or I'm sorry, the reptilian brain, which is fight or flight. It's high stress and our bodies don't function because we're not in coherence. We're operating like this, energetically, but also biochemically, which I just find is fascinating because it's like I know it and I knew it, but I didn't have the language for it until the last three or four years. But when we land and we land and we land and we line up and we find that place and it can be stillness, it can be expanse, it can feel safe, it can be spacious, it can be all kinds of open experiences, then the biochemistry in our systems can actually reset. Like it doesn't take but a few seconds for the cortisol to begin to drop, for the oxytocin to feel good to begin to activate. And when we and and then when when that is changing, then neuropathways are changing. So neuropathways are are um, like uh, a highway system, right? Most of us, I'm gonna say humanity-wise, live on newer pathways of stress, of unworthiness, of blame, of it, all those things. So we're actually changing our neurology as well as our biology by doing this spiritual work. Every single time we do it, we're getting that shift and change. The power comes when we become very diligent and vigilant in choosing, here's our choice again, to be aligned to that which is more true. The other thing that's happening right now on this planet in this, in this amazing, crazy year and you know decades really, but right now is we are in a transition from what, what I call the separated human, right? The, hum, the human, the humanity of the last however many thousands of years where we believed in a separation, but it's not only that we believed in separation, we're wired as separate, but we're in this quantum leap, we're in this evolutionary leap into really a new species almost. Barbara Marks Hubbard used to talk about that in the, well, for years she talked about that, but leading up to 2012, and now she's she's gone now, but but I think she would say, now we're doing it, we're finally getting it. We're, we're seeing that happen and that evolutionary leap is from separation to wholeness, from separation to oneness. But what I'm finding now in my work is that oneness is the start point. Like, you know, I've been preaching for over 20 years and, I, and I've taught oneness. But recently, in the last year, it's like that's the start point for where we can go and where we go from oneness is really this allness. But it's not a thought. It's a being. It's a different neurology. It's a different biochemistry. Now, some people are talking about how we're becoming, we're changing from our physical carbon-based bodies to our crystal and light bodies. Doriana, who um, was here for a moment, she's popped off, um, does a lot of work with youthing and the crystalline bodies and the light bodies and all of that. So if you're interested in that, connect with her because she's really <laughs> pretty amazing too. But when we are in that change, we're, we're as if we're the caterpillar, right? That's gone to mush. So everything is up and we're, and we're planting Barbara Mark Sumber used to talk about imaginal cells. So we have the imaginal cells of our new becomingness, of our new humanity. We have our imaginal cells of our oneness and our wholeness. And when we land in that, every single time we land in that, we are seeding and creating and bringing forth new humanity now. So what we're seeing is this incredible beauty of the earth, we're seeing incredible innovation and collaboration, creativity, and that's changing the world. So the choice when we're caught in our life is to go, oh, I'm just caught in my life. One of the things I was sharing in, in one of the groups earlier um, this week was uh, my dad's got some health stuff going on and he, re-entered the hospital and the day he went into the hospital, I thought, I think this is it. He's, 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 he's on his way up. Now today he'll probably come home from the hospital and think, no, he's here for a while. So I'm bounced back and forth, but I, but I feel 
and this is for you, not just my story, but for you, I feel what I feel, right? I feel, oh, I'm, I, I, I was triggered in fear. I was triggered in grief. I was figured in a, a huge resistance to pain. I just don't want anybody to feel pain. Right? I just, I just, you know, I just don't, I just want it to be okay. Right? But I'm triggered in all of that density. So I went and I looked at my trigger. I turned toward my trigger and, and we'll name it grief or fear. And I just named it. Now, in New Thought, we don't really want to name that which we don't want. But the truth is, when we name it, it, it's like it frees it from the concretized part of the subconscious. It frees it enough that we can work with it and play with it. When we allow something, we're dropping resistance. And so I looked at it, and then I looked underneath it. I go, well, what else? What else is there? And what I found underneath my trigger um, was a spark. It was something different. Hey, do you remember the word I used? It wasn't spark when I was talking about it before. The trigger became something else. It became like, like a spark that was like, oh, what else is there? And what I came into was this absolute expanded spaciousness of so much love. And, and in regards to my dad, I just lent. I didn't dream it up. I didn't think about going there. I just went to this Oh my God, job well done. You know, if you're, if you're going life well lived and I've had my issues with my dad, believe me, but there was like no sting. There was like, it was clean. And I went, wow, had I not been willing to turn towards my trigger, I would have never experienced that. So that's another layer of the choice point and the choose again. And it's not a choose to deny what is. We've, we used to do that all the time. It's, it's turn and embrace what is, and then choose again, and then choose again, and then choose again. So I'm going to stop there. I, I think I need to start in another church or something, because I'm really getting into this preaching stuff again. So <laughs> uh, open to conversations, thoughts. Um, insights, impact, and then, and then we'll have some conversation. And then we're going to go do a process and we're going to just align up with focus and pivot. So well, like, ex oh, go ahead, Leila. Sorry. Ahead. I was thinking that when you name it, though, it actually helps you to bring it into one thing. Because sometimes if you're just feeling anxiety and you're feeling all of these things and you, and it, you just feel that roiling inside of you or the scatteredness, if you, it's just there. It's just doing all of this stuff. So I like the idea of naming it because then it's like then you can catch it and then do something with it. You know, you can either blow it away or you can squash it, or you can just bless it and let it go. But I like the idea of naming it so that you're not trying to chase it, but you don't know what you're chasing. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like naming the, the monster under the bed, you know, when, you're, when we're kids and the kids are little, and it's like, I'm scared of the monster under the bed. But if you go actually look at it, and you go, remember, remember Monsters, Inc.? Oh! What's your name? Oh, I'm Sully. Oh, I can be in relationship with Sully mm -hmm. instead of just scared of the amorphous, whatever, all of the things. Right. Yeah. So, Gloria, I didn't exactly speak to pivot, but could you feel the pivot in that? Yeah, no, I, I appreciated your story and sharing about your father since that really resonates with the. Um, um, my experience with my dad and he's outside right now. Um, and I have had that sensation. It's like, Oh my gosh, there's just so many emotions. They're all so wrapped up. Um, and that just that sense of not being able to identify it causes me a lot of anxiety and agitation. And it tends to just amplify 
when I don't fully understand it or I'm resisting it and I don't want to connect with it, yeah, the monster is much larger than it actually is. And, and for me, that's something that I've, you know, I have struggled with uh, new thought uh, for many years was that tendency, not to say that it happens all the time, but that tendency to want to be almost in denial about anything bad or anything negative, or I can't say anything, you know, about what's happening to me. If I voice it, then I give it power. And I, and I agree with that. But then I think there's a balance, you know, I also have to acknowledge and accept what is happening in my life right now. So then it doesn't have the power over me. And, you know, and I, and I love the reminders that you're giving me that I don't have to keep feeding it. I don't have to keep feeding the monster. My, my resistance just, just gives my power away. And I recognize that I have had a lot of resistance. Um, I was doing a different meditation and I, I had this vision in my meditation of having these shackles around my ankles and this long line of chains behind me with all my family members hanging on and and like the previous generations and of them like falling into the other dimension and they were all hanging on to me <laughs> and it was up to me to be the stake in the ground and make sure I hung on to every single one of them you know, that I, I was the anchor and I was the one that had to be strong and I had to carry all the burdens. And it, it was like, wow, isn't that interesting? That's what I've been doing. You know, and, and it, no wonder I've had so much resistance. You know, I, I thought that all of my family members, um, their very existence, their very well-being depended on me in some crazy way. So pivoting around, looking at that, it's like, oh, okay, that's actually not mine. And if I unfetter myself, if I allow myself to release those shackles, then instead of just laying down on the ground or grasping at something, I can enable my family members to make the choice to stand on their own. And it's not me trying to drag them or trying to hang on to them. Um, not that that's necessarily an easy thing to do because I, I keep working with this. This has been an issue I've worked with all my life, you know, but you're right. This is a new time now. It is a new humanity. And I love what you said about Barbara Marks Hubbard. You know, I can choose my imaginal self. I can, you know, even though I'm not totally there, I can connect with the essence of it. I can imagine, okay, what does it feel like to be that right now? It doesn't have to be when I'm 80 years old, you know, it could be right now. What's, what does that feel like? And, and that to me is a, powerful pivot point to, to line up, as you say, and I love your language, you know, to line up with that imaginal self. Thank you. So I want to just encourage you to just, you said you are the stake in the ground that's connected to all the shackles or you're shackled to the stake. Why don't you, can you, and we can do this next time we do work together, but like take the shackle off your ankle and put it on the stake. And you don't have to enable anybody else to do anything. You just get to free yourself because you are, even in that, right? Even in that, I want to free myself so I can help them. Like you don't have to help them, but freeing yourself will help them. Like what if unhooking your shackle unhooks all of their shackles? Yeah. I mean, Right? Keep working with it. But what if you could work with it today and be done with it? Be freed from it. And that doesn't mean that you won't find yourself shackled tomorrow or the next day. But once you unshackle, then you know how to do it. It's like, oh, there it is again. Oh, there it is again. Oh, there it is again. I love that. So I'll create a different stake, maybe a giant stone column. Yeah. And then I can, I can put that there, but then also give them the opportunity to unshackle themselves. And, you know, when you said that, I realized, like, I have this like, subconscious belief, I guess it's not subconscious anymore, that this process has to be lengthy and laborious, and I have to work really hard to free myself, <laughs> <laughs> which is not true. <laughs> it's no longer true. It's no longer true. It is fast. It is quick. It is quantum. It is done. And then when it comes up, you go, oh, wait, I already did that. It becomes when when you're there right when it becomes erasing the blackboard 
I like that so much better. Yeah. <laughs> it's new humanity. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, Viola asked me to re-say what I said. I have no idea what I said that you liked. So um, give me a little help here, Leila, and we'll see if we can capture it. It was that saying that you said about something with your soul. Um, I, and I was saying I could even say that today, and you were saying, well, maybe sometimes you say it to yourself. Oh, come on, guys, help me out. Um, I, choo I choose something that did it with my soul, and I, I don't know. So I wanted to write it down so that I could, because once I write it, I'll remember it. But. Nothing can disturb the calm of my soul. I think that's what it was. The calm peace of my soul. The calm peace of my soul. All right. You got it? Nothing can disturb the calm peace of my soul. No, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Glory, I'm sending you a message. There you go. Yeah, but anyway. Thank you. Kate, Jenna, Diane, anything you want to add or share? Uh, yeah, I think I, I really um, valued what uh, Layla and Glory have shared. Um, and I can relate and resonate with with um, with their words. I the something that struck me from what you said was um, the two things, but um, one was the what's more, and when you pivot um, and you look at what it is, then you can ask what's more. And for me, what's more is always um, my go-to place. And so that's very powerful. And uh, the other thing was the what if. Um, what, if it, it, what if it really was? What if I could feel it in my bones? What if I uh, was certain um, that something could happen? Um, that I could be uh, calm in the face of whatever's going on in my life, what would that feel like? And then connecting with the feelings of what it would be like and just allowing yourself, your mind might get in the way, but, um, you know, just saying, okay, thanks, mind, I'm just going to play with this for a while. Um, but what if... Uh, you know, it could could be like this. What would it feel like? So those those are two uh, things that struck me. Beautiful. Thanks. Okay. I really um, like the idea of turning and and facing whatever that is, because I know that I can. I used to resist it a lot, whatever it was. And you know how they say, what you resist persists. Mm -hmm. And so when I would be like, no, I'm not going to be in fear or I'm not in fear. Or, this is not anxiety or whatever. It just would get worse and worse. Instead of, I almost sometimes practice welcoming it. I'm like, hello, how are you? I see you're here today. Um, but I like then the idea of moving beyond that and knowing how to be, move beyond that into something else. So I, that was a good practice. I also like the erasing. I like the... Um, I wrote it down. Oh, but I like that I can choose my imagined self. That gives me a lot of just food for thought. Yeah. Yeah. I like playing with future self. Maybe we'll do that in another call. Introduce you to your future self and, and play with that. So let's do a, let's take some time and do a process and line up with like as we pivot, we land in that lineup and then line up with the idea of focus. The other word that comes to me when I think focus is clarity. That's sort of my go-to um, is clarity. So you can use your word, whatever, whatever comes to you. But um, let's do that. So everything that you've heard so far, all of the shifts, the sort of the micro shifts that, that are taking place as we have
have been in conversation, we just line up. We line up. We line up. We drop beneath, right? We drop beneath the thoughts, the noise of the thoughts. We drop beneath the emotions that might be flowing, and we just let them flow as just pure energy, and we land in the core of our being. As we land in the core of our being, we actually activate those imaginal selves. And we move through a portal from what is, not making what is go away, already having made it welcome, already allowing it, accepting it, naming it. We move through the portal from what is into the field of infinite potential unlimited possibilities into the field of the quantum wave. And as we enter this field right now, for me, what I see, it doesn't have to be for you, but just like enter the cosmos. It's, it's huge and expansive and black and the stars are so bright. Each star is a potential, a possibility. Potential out, potential out, potential outy. That's it. And so bask for a moment with that infinite possibilities. And feel yourself expanding into the new, the biggest, boldest, most brilliant becomingness. That which is an imaginal cell in the core of your being, that which is totally expressed embodied, embraced, and just line up with that. And then see that for the world. Let's just go cosmic. See that for the world. It's almost as if you peek over the side of something that you've never yet seen before and imagine a world that is new humanity. Imagine a world, a new consciousness, a new dimension even of playing. That is spacious, expansive, innovative, creative, beauty, kindness, love, compassion. And then in that infinite galaxy of stars, choose one. Could be focus, it could be clarity, it could be a becomingness, it could be something totally brand new. It could be free f freedom from shackles. It could be a knowing. And just allow in your experience one of those stars to brighten. You go, oh, there's my star. There's my potential. There's my particle still in the way. And begin to draw it closer to you. Begin to draw it towards you as you are drawn towards it. And feel it in its fullness. Oh. And allow it to expand almost to make a movie in front of you. What does that look like, feel like, taste like, smell like? What else is possible? And this time we name it in order to claim it from the wave of the quantum. Feel that star moving even closer to you as you move closer to that star as you Integrate as it comes into you, as you come into it, as it integrates through all aspects of your being, filling you with a vibrational frequency, a coherence, an alignment with what that star represents. As it drops into you, as you drop into it, feel it moving through your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual bodies. Almost like a warm liquid being poured into your system, your being, system of being. 
Feel it integrating. Feel it integrating through all dimensions of time and space, through all states of awareness and consciousness as it enfolds and embodies you it dissolves anything unlike it gently dismantling any belief any prior programming any prior patterns so that it fills you as you embody Letting it move all the way through your system, beginning to anchor it as it integrates. Saying its name it can be a single word, a phrase, an idea, a symbol, it doesn't matter. But naming it. And then we begin to lift it up. We turn it up, turn up the volume, turn up the light. Turn up the dimmer switch. We lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it. As we lift it, we are lifted in consciousness and then we gift it to the world. This which we desire, this which we call forth, we gift to the world. We gift to the universe. We gift it freely, fully, abundantly. And as we gift it to the world, it circles right back around and rains down on you these qualities, these sprinkles, these crystalline particles raining down on you, open to receive it, to receive it more fully. Moving through you, becoming as you, in your biggest, boldest, most brilliant becomingness of this moment. Notice what you notice. Notice if you have any physical sensations. Notice what the vibration is, what the frequency is. Memorize it. Feel the neural pathways being built or strengthened or expanded. Memorize the chemical cocktail of this new expanded thing. Feel how your body feels when you are in alignment with this vibration. Once again, name it and claim it. You can claim it with an I am, I am focused, I am expanded, I am new humanity. I am my biggest, boldest, most brilliant becomingness. And maybe also name the experience you're having, the peace, the ease, the expansion, spacious, whatever it is for you. Take a couple of deep breaths in. And when you're ready, open your eyes as the new. What did you experience? in a couple of words. How are you experiencing life right now in this moment? Maybe that's a better ask. I'll share, I just felt like I was um, levitating. Even though I was connected, I felt uh, buoyant. And also this crystalline star was just my essence. That was my imaginal self essence. So thank you. It was beautiful. 
Beautiful. And buoyant. So every time you notice that you're feeling shackled, go, oh, wait, I have buoyant. I know buoyant. Beautiful. Okay. I kind of felt like, you know how when you're sitting right um, on the beach and so the waves can kind of come up and go back and just real gently kind of wash over the bo your body that's sitting on the sand. That's how I felt. And I just sitting there and kind of wash up and wash back and wash up. And pretty soon I kind of wasn't separate from the ocean or anything, but it was just calmness. I felt calmness. And that's a gift. Yeah. Beautiful. Anna Diane? Diane? Mm -hmm. I felt serenity and sort of knowing. Um, assurance maybe would be a better word, more accurate. Assurance that it was so. Beautiful. And Leila. Well, Leila is feeling kind of excited for the day. And uh, a lot lighter. And I can go back and just be my happy self. The one that I like to hang out with. And, uh, you know, spread some joy around today. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. And for me, it, it's, it's, um, it, it's strengthening the essence of whom I'm, I'm becoming. Like, like the essence of who I am evolving as my biggest, boldest, most brilliant essence is it's, it's strengthening that every time I do this. And that's what it was too. It's like, Oh yeah, there it is. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh yeah, there it is. Like truly, there's nothing to worry about. Truly, there is nothing wrong. You can see lots wrong if you look on the outer, but, but truly there's nothing wrong. There's nothing broken. There's nothing to fix. We are exactly where we are and doing this work is the exact thing for us to do right now. And it's not even, it's not even work. I say work like it's work, like it used to be work, right? And now it's just like, it's, it's the practice. I think that's a better word. It's the practice of beings. We are right at our hour time, but I'm open for any other questions or comments or dialogue before we wrap up. Glory, check your messages. Thank you, Lee Ilya. And thank you, Eliza. It was a beautiful session or call. You're welcome. It felt really good today. Yeah. Hey, Lee Ilya, curious, curious in your heart when you go to work today. I apologize, I didn't hear you. I said curious in your heart when you go to work today. You're breaking up a little bit, but she said curious in your heart when you go to work. Oh, yes. Thank you. I was going to say in my pocket, but I like it in my heart. <laughs> yes, I will send all kinds of love that way, won't I? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Ooh. Let me know if you need anything, and I'll uh, be seeing you all around. Okay. Thank take you. Care. Thank you. Thank you, all everyone. Right. Thank you, Eliza. <laughs>